you and I, we need to talk. We need to start a dialogue about slow technology. And just to get out of the way, I'm not talking about computers that are slow. I'm talking about making the experience of technology better for everyone. Now, the easiest way to introduce this is to compare it to its big brother, slow food. People tend to understand that, but I'll run through what that's about. Slow food is simply the idea of eating better and understanding that the choices we make as consumers matter, not just to ourselves, but to others. Slow food started when somebody just looked at this thing that's present in our everyday lives and said, you know, let's think about it. And they wrote a book, and that resonated. So someone wrote another book, and another, and then someone started a movement, and then another. And where we are now is we have local foods and 100-mile diet and organics all readily available down at our big box food retailers. The reason for that is because people bought in, and they voted with their dollars. Now, I realize it's not perfect. They have a long way to go, but it's a start, and it's better than remaining silent. What slow food did was it asked us to just simply concentrate on why. Ask why. Why am I eating this? The idea, of course, is that if you ask better questions, you'll get better answers. It started to funnel down, and now we're at the point where we start thinking twice, more often than not, about what we're eating. And when we do decide what we're going to eat, we decide to treat it better. And we think about the things, the sources of these foods, and where they go when we dispose of them, so that we're not screwing things up for the future. Now, technology, I don't need to convince you that that's everywhere, too. It's everywhere. Entertainment, communication, education, even food. Everyone here has a cell phone, and you'll go home to your computers and your tablets and the internet. And that's all good. I love technology. I truly believe that it's a tool for the better. It can make a positive difference, and it has. But it's not perfect. Things can change, and we have to make that happen. And that's what slow technology is all about. Slow technology is about being a better user, a more conscientious user. And I'm going to offer three things of the many that I could choose from to illustrate how that is. Now, the first thing is we are buying a tremendous amount of junk. Like, I mean a lot of junk, and that's an official figure. <laughs> we're taking this stuff and oftentimes treating it like junk. And I don't mean we're just dropping it on the floor, but we're not really learning about it and using it to its capacity, and certainly not to our own. And finally, we're so distracted by this upgrade cycle of shiny new that we're rarely thinking about where this stuff comes from and what happens to it when we dispose of it. So the way I see it, working on the front line of this industry, if we're not choosing the right stuff, if we're buying the wrong stuff to begin with, we could be wasting our money. If we're not treating it as best we can and not using it to our own capacity, then we're wasting our minds. And if we're not thinking about where this stuff comes from and where it ends up, we could be hurting other people. And we are, in significant numbers. And that's worth asking why about. Slow food simply says, ask why. It's a higher level question than how, so that's an important thing to point out. This isn't a how-to guide for what you should be buying. Rather, it's a way of thinking about the things that you do choose to buy, because what you buy is up to you based on your needs, your values, what you want to get out of it. But it's better than remaining silent. Start asking why, and slow technology can save your money, save your mind, and it'll save the world. I was warned about that last one. Apparently, it's trendy. <laughs> I want to show you something. This is my chart. Many TEDx talks have a chart. This is mine, and I like it. <laughs> it speaks volumes to me. What this is are sales of global technological stuff, laptops, tablets, mobile phones, servers, things like that. The numbers are really not important. The data goes back to 2005 and projects forward into 2017. It's the trend that's important here. The blue bars 
represent what I have very generally categorized as durable goods. Now, durable goods are things that in their primary design are repairable. You can fix them. You have a problem with it, you take the part out that broke, you put in a new one, and the whole continues to function. Desktop computers, servers, business printers are good examples of those. The red bars, those are non-durable goods. And those are things that we're buying, technological gadgets, whatnot, that in their primary design are disposable. They're not meant to function outside of a unified whole. So for example, if you crack the screen on a tablet, you throw it away and you get another one. It's not often times that you can fix these things. Even if there's a tip of the hat to repairability, it's not worth your time, it's not worth your money, and it's a big hassle. Put on top of that the incentive to upgrade, and they're disposable. So this is very interesting to me, because it speaks out a couple things, first off. The first is you're getting real excited about buying lots of stuff. Because I know I'm not buying all this stuff. I buy my fair share. We're buying a lot of stuff. Interestingly, we're getting really excited about stuff that we're going to throw away. Whereas we're not getting very excited about stuff that is designed to be kept. Which seems kind of backwards to me. I'm Scottish. You want to hang on to stuff until it's dust. <laughs> and we're not doing that. We're getting excited because we have something that we can throw away. And it's not the industry's fault. I'd love to blame the industry. That would be easy. But it's not true. Because the industry's looking at these same data. And they're saying, well, look at all the stuff they're buying. Let's just keep rolling it out. For example, if everyone here, everyone across the world, 100% of the time, only bought orange phones, that's all you'd see on the market. I mean, there'd be a blue one for the iconoclast that just have to be different. But you're all going to buy orange phones. If you demand different goods, if you demand better goods, they'll give them to you. So this seemed kind of funny to me, because working on the front line of technology, I deal with people on a daily basis. And this plays out every time someone wants a new network, or a new server, a new computer, a new tablet, new phone. Everybody says, I want this one to last. This one I need to last as much or as long as the last one. That's what we say, but the numbers on mass are very different. We're not buying those things. And I thought, why is that? So I started looking at all the ads of things that promote those things that we buy. These computer ads are so colorful, they're like comic books for adults. And I read them all the time, so I admit that. So I'm looking at these things, and what they tend to promote, first off with computers, for example, are the latest Ferrari levels processor. My question to you, who drove a Ferrari here today? I had this fantasy someone's going to put their hand up. <laughs> all right. Why not? Well, I checked the parking lot. You all drove Toyotas and Fords and Volvos and Subarus. You did that because those are cars that you understand meet your needs. You need a wagon or you need a van or you need a sedan. You understand the maintenance schedule. You understand its reputation for reliability. And that suits your needs. And you're willing to pay for that quality. That's more or less how we buy cars. But we kind of do the exact opposite when it comes to computers. Computers, we rely on blind faith. We look at the ad and we think, that must be it, so we just go and buy stuff. And that's a problem. Because oftentimes, we're not getting what actually suits our needs. I took a look at these ads again, and I thought, OK, well, people are getting duped. Fair enough. You know, We need to get people asking more questions. And I thought, well, look at all these ads here. I'm going to just, just eyeball these things, the computers that you see for sale every day. And if you weren't buying them, or if they weren't being promoted just for their Ferrari processor, how about if we change the nature of them to be durable, to last longer? And just eyeballing them, I sort of figured there's about 250 bucks that you can take out, on average, of any of these computers, and about 175 bucks worth of stuff that you can chuck in there to get a computer that's more likely to last. That's 75 bucks in your pocket for a computer that's more likely to last. And all you have to do is ask why. Now, you don't need, need my knowledge. There's this whole group out there called salespeople, and slow technology is going to make them better. We're going to work together on this. All you need to do when you need something, a tablet, a phone, a printer, a fax machine, anything, you go in and you say, I want this one to last, because that's what you're telling me one-on-one. -on -one. And they'll say, well, yeah, OK, buy that one. Say, why? 
Well, because it's got that thing in it. Why is that good? Well, because it lasts longer, because it's got that thing. Why is it better than that one? And if they don't give you an answer, give them a couple minutes. Go shop in the camera department. If you don't get an answer from them, ask somebody else. If they don't give you an answer, shop somewhere else. Vote with your dollars, vote with your feet. It worked for slow food. Slow technology is the concept of simply asking why so you can better unite your needs with what you're buying. Slow technology can save you money. Let's move on to your mind. So you get this thing home, piece of technology, it's wonderful, you know this is a good deal. You get it home and you want to use it. Most of the time nowadays you open up the box of anything, printer, tablet, computer, and you put in your name and email address and it just sort of configures itself. And that's nice. It's very attractive and we like that, so they keep giving it to us more and more. The problem with that is that in addition to that, we're getting all these ready-made functions that come with computers that we're becoming enamored with to the point that we're becoming obsessed with multitasking, which is funny because we don't multitask. Humans don't. That's fairly well known. What we do is we construct this linear progression of distractions. That's why none of us here drive and talk on a cell phone, right? It's bad. Distractions are bad. And get this. Now, I read this on the internet, so you know it's true. I read that multitasking is the only behavior that gets worse the more you practice it. Think about that. I mean, all you're doing is digging yourself deeper into distraction. It makes sense. And consumer psychologists are all over this stuff. There's all these studies about how boredom is proven to increase creativity, how downtime can increase productivity. And the studies kind of go like this. You get a bunch of people in a room, in two groups, and you get them to do something, measure them on it. Then you separate them. One group goes and sits off there and learns a bit more. The other group, you get them to go walk in the woods, you know, look at the trees and the flowers and enjoy yourself. Then you bring them back together, you measure them again. The group that goes for the walk in the woods tends to, to perform significantly better on memory and cognition. Turns out the secret ingredient in learning is time. Oh no. <laughs> the correlate I'll offer in slow food is wine. You don't take a bottle of red wine, plug it into your face, suck it back and think, whoa, I know that wine. <laughs> no, you barf. You take that wine, you put it into a nice glass, and you swish it around, and you look at the colors. They call them legs. And then you smell it. And then you argue with all your friends over whether it's blackberry or bacon fat or shoe leather that you're smelling. <laughs> That's how you enjoy wine. And by the time you get to the bottom of that bottle, you're not barfing, you're happy. <laughs> Turns out that you need time to digest things. We know that. That's a fact. Similarly, you need time to absorb facts. If you're buying technology more deliberately to meet your needs, you'll know what you have it for. That, in turn, ideally would encourage you to learn how to use it better. You're the user. Be a better one. Just like Anne said in her talk, fix your phone. <laughs> Slow technology can save your mind. Okay, enough about you. Let's talk about the world. Well, if we're going to fix the world, we have to understand the acquisition and disposal cycle. And it goes something like this. We live here in North America, and we like our stuff. We love our stuff, and we like it cheap, and we like it fast. So we all over to Asia, hey, can you make us some stuff? And Asia says, this yeah. This is a demonstration of flip format. It is not. <laughs> and Asia says, yeah, we can make stuff, and we can make it fast, and we can make it cheap. It works well for all of us. They experience industrialization, and they have for a long time. It's done well for them. They make a lot of money. They've had great growth. Wonderful. But there's negative sides to industrialization, such as environmental erosion, displacing social groups, increase in mental health and physical health ailments, respiratory conditions, and hypertension from cost-efficient working environments. Not all conditions are like this. But it's worth pointing out that we don't make much of this stuff here because we're not willing to work in those conditions, whatever they are. I'm not willing to work in those conditions, and I'm certainly not willing to do it for that amount of money. But I'll ask them to do it, and I'll ask their children to do it. That's the agreement. So they make this stuff. And as they make it, they package it up, and they you know, fling it over just like that. It's called the IT fling. Look it up. <laughs> and it all ends up in this boat. 
down by the docks. And when that boat fills up, there's some poor guy down there. His job is to shove it off into the Pacific. And it, we want it fast, remember. So it comes whipping across the Pacific with such ferocity that it hits North America, slams into the coast, flips over, and stuff just flies everywhere. That's how we get stuff. Look it up. <laughs> now, that's where we are right now. It's never been easier to get stuff. It's never been easier to find things. Get a cell phone at the corner store. And we like it that way. The problem is that if we're not buying things deliberately, with purpose, and we know why, then we may be disappointed with them. Find them anticlimactic. Didn't really do what I wanted. But the next one will. The next one will be faster. So as we pick up these things and look at them and get distracted by the newer upgraded model, we do the IT fling, and it lands into another boat on the other side of the continent. Now that boat there, when it fills up, we push that stuff off, and it goes flinging across the Atlantic, and it slams into Africa. And we yell over, can you deal with all this stuff? We don't need it anymore. And they say, yeah, for sure, I guess. I mean, it worked out pretty good for Asia. Problem is, I'm not sure they're making much money off of this. However, they are experiencing all the downsides, you know, environmental degradation, social displacement, and physical and mental health ailments, like hypertension, and all sorts of crazy things from cost-efficient working environments. But that's the deal. And it looks like this. This is an e-waste repository. That's a nice name for it, outside of a town called Accra in Ghana. This is where all the devices go that are no longer trendy. Things that were bought out of novelty instead of function. Things that were bought for aesthetics rather than durability. Things that you knew you needed, but turns out you didn't. They were a good deal, though. Things that your kids pleaded for, but turns out they didn't like. And then there's a lot of stuff that really needs to be there. And this is toxic. And this is my industry. And for this, it's worth asking why. If only so the next time you buy this thing, this device, this phone, maybe it'll be bought with more deliberation of what you need it for in the first place, whether you should buy it, not just because it's a good deal. You'll know what purpose it has in your life, why it deserves to be in your life. And that might encourage you to learn how to use it better. That might encourage you to use it for longer, get more usage out of it so you don't need to upgrade. And that means it'll take longer to end up there and provide greater benefit and value to you in the meantime. I read on the internet, so you know it's true, that if you want to start change, you have to create awareness. Awareness leads to ideas. Ideas lead to action. Action leads to change. Slow technology isn't about technology. It's about being a better user. Save your money, save your mind, and I'm pretty sure we'll save the world. Thank you.